all enjoy a bit of karaoke. I know it's not technically allowed at the moment because of lockdown regulations, but this is called Old Lungs, Young Lovers. In flat-roofed pubs, on the corners of estates, he clutches his carrier with pride. They have the lyrics on the screen, but this man is analogue, typed up, stacked neatly, and then dispatched into plastic. He winces as he watches young romantics, cavorting and dancing at angles, nursing half a feakstons until the karaoke resumes, his sun star spotlight. His voice is gravelly nowadays, with a croak as he pushes his range, but twenty years previous, this guy was a different class. Eyes scrunched, he serenades the lovers that escaped him, as the young romantics fumble through the food of distant dreams, dumb to what they're missing and how precious these moments are. His three minutes flash, and he picks up his bag, and he shuffles to his stool at the bar. Glen Campbell, Johnny Walker, Tom Jones, and then bed. Old lungs, young lovers, every Friday from eight. Right, I shall see. To join the conversation, um, Victoria is a poet and spoken word artist from the East End of London. Her debut collection, Confessionals, was published by Speculative Books and then produced and directed by Sonic Youth as a full length stage show to critical acclaim. Victoria McNulty, how are you doing? Hello, hello. Uh, it's a miracle that I've actually managed to get Walter onto this tonight. Um, I'm that technophobic. <laughs> Mate, I know I'm the same, like, sorry, I know t the tech's a bit of a nightmare in it, but um, I'm glad you're here. I'm really, really excited to see you read a few poems tonight. Um, so was one of your last gigs in, in, in November in Glasgow, was that one of your last gigs before the lockdown? Yeah, um, one of my last gigs was actually was getting demoralised um, yeah. before the lockdown. And then, yeah, kind of... I did, I, I did a gig with Darren McGarvey before Christmas and then a Burns night and then that was it. So this is me just getting back into the swing of things now, really. Oh, well, I'm dead chuffed that you've agreed to do it. Like, I've always loved seeing you perform and I've always loved your stuff online. So I'm really buzzing that you've agreed to do the Insta session. Like, um, I've been doing it every week and it's, I've just my main aim is for it to be as relaxed as possible and as, as comfortable as possible for, for performers just to if you want to share old stuff new stuff whatever you want to do it's it's totally cool and i think people have enjoyed watching stuff it's a bit more relaxed as well you know like without the pressure of it being a big show or whatever so yeah how have you been finding lockdown have you been writing a lot or uh, yeah I, i've been writing a lot um i've been writing just observational stuff um i've also got a book coming out with speculative books in no october so nice. i'm trying to kind of get that finished um it, but it's been good for me creatively because I've had no distraction. Um, but I know some people have found it really hard, to be honest. I think. It's weird, isn't it? Because in a way, you've sort of got this like fog over your head with like what's going on with the world and stuff. But then at the same time, you've got a bit of time and space just to like read a book or you know do stuff that you're normally a bit too busy. So oh, I'm glad to hear that it's been good for you. That's cool. Totally. Uh, so can you tell us anything about the new book or is it all a bit secret or is it all still coming together? Um, no, uh, it's it's nearly together. Um, it's called Exiles and uh, actually it started off as a spoken word show that we, a kind of test run with a musician called Abby Normal and an arts group called Gag in December and the idea was that we would tour it but obviously that's not you know, a reality um, for a long time, I think. So the work was there, it was written, it just needed to be kind of polished up and turned into something that was readable. And um, right. it's a bit about Glasgow. It's about a young couple who kind of get caught up in the midst of the kind of aftermath of the Iraq war and the kind of protests that happened about that in Scotland and then what happened after the Iraq war in Scotland, because obviously... Um, it had a massive political impact as well, so it's kind of about that. Oh, that sounds amazing. So that started off as a spoken word show and it's sort of been um, turned into a book. With Confessionals, was that a book first and then a show? Or was that also a show no. first? No, that, that was a show as well, actually. Um, the Confessionals is actually pretty much the transcript of what I wrote for that show. I mean, I didn't know how to write a script or anything. I just regurgitated an hour of poetry onto my phone, my word pad, <laughs> and sent it to a publisher. God oh, bless yeah. them for printing it. <laughs> yes, because um, I'm always interested to hear, because I've always written 
with a stage, like with an audience in mind first and then thought about it being in a book, whereas I know a lot of people, obviously, it's the other way around. So I'm always interested to hear where people come from. Um, yeah, yeah, me too. Um, I don't know. You know how you read some poems or some poets and their work looks great on the page. They just know how to structure stuff. Yeah. I'm, I'm not really there. I, I'm a stage poet, to be honest. I like being on the stage. Yeah, fair play. And it's that, like storytelling tradition in it as well. Like it's that human yeah. connection in the room and that sort of feeding off people and whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I get cool. you. Cool. Um, so um, have you have you got anything that you want to share that you've written during lockdown or, or anything from the new book or anything like that? Or do you want to um, go with an old Yeah. Story? No, I'll just, I've got a couple of poems I've written during lockdown and we'll just play it by ear. We'll see how the time goes, right? <laughs> I've just got a pile. Yeah. Yes, whatever, um, you, whatever you want to do, cool. So this is just a short one I wrote. Um, basically, I just missed the football, like actual football. Not that keen in Celtic right now, considering the players are going on holiday to Spain and all of that and getting yeah, the game that's... stopped. But anyway, um, that's the side. That's just my personal huff. But I'm, <laughs> I'm missing that thing where you go out and you meet your pals and you bump into people at the pub and you're like, God, how's your ma? And all that, that part of the football... Um, yeah, so yeah, yeah. This, poem, this poem's called Hunt. Wet, waxed your jacket, lightning strike stood tight, prayer hands, mind's pocketed scarf, Arab strap round frostbit face. It's football in a tin can these days, my lungs escape me, tear gas breath stream rising from that tray of chips ahead, and God, I would plough my fingers just to taste that heat. Full time, we find our feet pound streets, it feels beat, but we are warriors, one goal up, huddled in the pub, mandolin choir rising, the mob throbs with Calton songs, windows steaming, dreams is 67. This is the game, my friend, it's not a sport, but a life spent, and we hunt every Sunday, lay out our dead on the Monday commute. <laughs> nice. I love that. Yeah, that, the match day ritual, it's magic, isn't it? The match is almost like just a, a bit in the middle. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. Absolutely. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, I think that's a, a, a big part of it. I mean, I, you know, I grew up during, um, you know, Celtic didn't win anything that significant for most of my childhood, actually. And, um, but you still went. And you still watched it, and you still, you know, liked football. And it is, it's about that ritual, that routine of it. It's great. It's almost a surprise when you start doing well, isn't it? Like when Leeds got promoted last month, I was like, bloody hell, what? <laughs> That's not meant to happen. That was, yeah. that was brilliant. I have to say, your tweet, Twitter feed kept me alive for the oh. three days that Leeds got promoted. I thought there is hope in the world. I was paranoid <laughs> that people just like, unfollow, 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 but never mind. Um, no, I love that. I love that poem. That's 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 great. I love that. And I can picture like the toll booth and all that and the pubs in like, I've never been in Glasgow on match day, much to my regret, but I can sort of picture it all springing to life and yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah, I'm missing the toll booth. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Same. Um, <laughs> I'm missing the 160 vodka, Matt. That's my problem. <laughs> <laughs> um... I don't know, have you been writing much? Um, are you more kind of promotion? I can't write, basically, I don't know about you, but I can't write a poem just on its own. Like, So I started working on a book, a novel about a year ago. It's like a verse novel sort of thing. So I've been able to write on that, but like a new poem or like a standalone poem, I just can't do it. It's either a project or oh, I can't. Really? Yeah, it's really weird. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's just a phase, I think. I don't know. So I've not written anything about then. this, really, if that's what you mean. But... <laughs> No, I, no, absolutely. Um, I've got, I wrote a poem, I wrote a love poem the other day, which is really quite weird for me, and an actual one. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was like, it wasn't even a backhanded one. <laughs> so I must be getting soft in my old age. Um, I can read that to you, just oh, now, yeah, if you please. like. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Hold your horn, you asked. Sprawled on emerald cut grass, our grey hairs touching at the split end. The park is lit with day drinkers, buzz swelling from it's no bevy cups. 
kids swing and round about down at the entrance. We are entranced on the path to the back gate. You've got a draw now, half Rutherglen, half Belfast. You draw, then pass to me, lips melting stout on thin filter tips. I watch your chest. Rise, fall, rise again with the summer heat wave, green blades cutsing in the tidal breath. I twirl a buttercup in my free hand. See, it's been so long since we've talked and an interwoven to rebel bands and dipped our toes in Ayrshire sand, and there's been so much sadness since she left. Fingers fleeting to touch someone that might have loved me once. And of course I say nothing because that's hot shame in my throat and your pinky takes mine in a knot, white skin swallowed in shovel palm. Your hands have broken the rules. We lie sky searching sigh. The trails are coming again. Blue and white flight paths but we are still grounded apart. I want to tell you a grave cho more agam orst. But I think you already know that. Oh beautiful. I love the, the line about the pinky and the yeah, that's that's great. I love that. Love a love poem. It might be I that might be the collection. Uh, that, yeah, I mean maybe by the time I'm seventy I'll have enough to fill a pamphlet. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> that was beautiful, though. I really enjoyed that. So, where, what did that just come out of nowhere, or have you been trying to write a love poem for a while? Or no, I, I think something that I've really noticed about lockdown is I miss the sort of human contact, and I, I'm not a particularly touchy feely person. Yeah. Um, but I'm finding with my loved ones or people that I care about, the the having to be apart from them even when they're there, I, I find it really difficult. And it was just kind of about craving just a human touch, I think. Just, yeah. I, I know you, will you please just hold my hand for 10 minutes? And obviously, like, you know, if you sit at a glass region, man, you get mocked and, you know, there's repercussions. But, but it, it is, that's been a big problem for me, the, the lack of personal and honest connection. So I think that's how it came out. Yeah, yeah, it's it's strange, isn't it? Just like how holding someone's hand or whatever now seems so intimate compared to like a year ago or whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, personal barriers or whatever. Like, I've come down to see I'm up. I've come up to see my mum for the first time in five months, and I didn't hug her. Like, I don't want to hug her, and just you know, because I'm nervous. And it just something like that, so simple, isn't it? It's mad. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. It's it's. Maybe it will make us rethink our relationships and how we engage with other people and how we value them. Um, but yeah. yeah, at the moment, it's a bit weird. I hope so. I certainly think we take things for granted. Um, or we took things for granted before. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah me too. Beautiful. Cool. Me too. Me too. Um, I don't know what it's like in Yorkshire, right? But I always think... I've got a poem here that I wrote during lockdown. And in Glasgow, there's like kind of, you can be roughly split into two groups of people. There's a group of people that see a massive fire and they're really concerned about it. And then there's a group of people who see a massive fire and they go out to watch everything burn. And, <laughs> <laughs> and um, during lockdown um, in the east end of Glasgow, there was quite a big um, fire in a tire shed. And it was near like, this old nightclub called Joanna D's that has never been opened in my lifetime. I, I mean, I don't, I, you, even if, I can't even imagine what it would have been like when it was a functioning nightclub, to be honest. It's kind of in the middle of a, an industrial estate be, between two empty schemes, if, two older schemes. If it, yeah. So anyway, there's a fire beside that and it was the middle of lockdown and I was like that to my wee boy, mature mother, me, mum will go and we'll watch the fire. <laughs> no being out there, <laughs> we'll go and we'll watch the fire. So when we got there, half of the East End of Glasgow was already there watching it, like with their phones and their beer and smoking joints. And I was like, is this what is going on? Um, so I wrote this poem just about that snapshot of a moment. Um, to put some context, Denison is like a, a gentrified area in the East End of Glasgow. It's where people go to stay when they can't afford rent closer to the university, basically. Right. Um, just 
because I'm about to slag it off a wee bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a Glasgow spectacle when you've got Mad Dog drawing fags, ranks of trackies, lag, gop, fly catching mouse, lining summer streets a gaze at the great Duke Street tire place. A ladder goes up, cascades from an extended hose, smoke billows burning to the river below. There's a cascade cavalcade of mobile phones flashing, wains cross-legged on the grass, begging, Mammy, can we go home? A boyfriend and girlfriend entwined, iris and rage, a skeleton stoats by, oblivious in a valley on days. There's always some dickhead for Deniston with a zoom lens in there somewhere. <laughs> a woman in slippers, a teenager barefoot, the guy for the kebab shop, shelters, sucking rollies under lamplight suit, a black helicopter scans for damage above, some wank scoots past in a dune buggy, the Polish yelps croaky, it's no safe, gonna just go home. We need entertainment where we can find it during lockdown ways. And fair play, at least Joanna D's nightclub lives to see another day. <laughs> Fucking hell, that was brilliant. I love that. I, I, like you say, people are watching it for all kinds of different reasons, aren't they? And yeah, like the whole destruction is a form of creation, that sort of like lure, that like fascination that we have with it and stuff as well. Yeah, that was class. <laughs> cool. Does Kevin Thank Keegan you. live in Deniston? What's that? Does Kevin live in Deniston? Kevin Peter well, I wouldn't want. I wouldn't want to say where Kevin Peagle Day lives on the internet, um, oh, yeah. but uh, you know, you may want to ask why you asked yourself that. <laughs> <laughs> but I no, think... I, I don't. I don't know where he stays. <laughs> I do think he mentions it in a poem. I'm not dobbing out his address or like his postcard. Or it. I'm not. Anyway. Oh, so he does. So he yeah, does. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I'm, not, I'm not trying to like divulge personal information or anything. Um, I was no, like, I, wait, <laughs> is this a trap? <laughs> no, no, sorry. I love Kevin. I'm just sort of taking the piss out of it. Sorry. It's all right. Anyways. No, it's cool. It's cool. Sorry. That, that it's because I'm so. Thank you. It's because I'm a tinfoil hat type with the internet, by the way. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know, I was actually thinking today when I was setting my phone up, I was like, will anybody be able to identify my house from the background? And then I'm like, no, <laughs> that's just madness. <laughs> well, you do not have to be of it, but I think we're all right. <laughs> I know, totally. <laughs> totally. Um, I don't know. Have we got time for one more? Yeah, whatever you want to do, like, it's if you want to read a couple more, like, it doesn't matter if it runs over a bit, it's, it's whatever you want to do. If you want to want to read more, more, it's totally fine. As long as you're comfortable, I'm okay. Yeah, I'm fine. Um, I've got a piece that was, that as part of Exiles, the book that's coming out in October. Oh, it's amazing. a bit of a longer piece. Nice. Um, and I was kind of, when I was writing it, I was trying to imagine what would happen if, Eve was cast out of the Garden of Eden to sort of wander the East End of Glasgow for eternity <laughs> and how she'd sort of feel about that as well. So um, it's a wee bit of a longer piece, but I'd like to read it if that's okay. Cool, yeah. In the beginning, there was only flesh. Dew, plump and sodium sex, he gave his rib and heart a seed and then they were equals. Fingers climb mountains of bones and breasts, brows soft and lips wet, fingerprints printing time and space, a slow breath and stalled space, and as the equinox streamed, the garden grew wild around them. So he turned his heels and he ran. Eve now sits in the Calton bar, a aura of colour glass, a tin pot band, the jukebox, a fading shade of deacon blue. This year, plods round her ears, you see nothing ever happens here, so she sinks a stout, holds back the tears. Fingers forming a roll-up, once feasted, now dirty with weather and cheap labour. She recalls it used to be green round here, and not green like trees, but green of flags and youth and envy. A commonwealth grey stings as she hushes out the side door, but there's no commonwealth round here. And in the summer, 
She saw him in the bric-a-brac, the George Best photo, like the one in his loft, his hair all black and soft. She sees him in the lead mirrors, the spotted spectres of smoke and decay. She sees him in the vinyl stalls, the style council singles, the cold thick walls. She sees him in the floorboards, her feet pound again and again. He didn't push her face in the dark or shame her or call her a slut. He didn't slice her and tame her or shackle and maim her. He just saw the fruit so full and ripe and was told if he turned his back, the world would let him have it. And so she became Cain and not able to leave Moss, lost amongst this hubbub, the artist studios and pop-up pubs. And as she shed her skin as a private let's now strangle the foliage. The pub's shutters were closed, her hair in a burn, she looked up from her phone, and he stood there in lamplight, all ivory white, elbows to mahogany, and in a sea of rigor boots, he flexed his wings and pulled her through and said, Eve, I want you, you can come with me now. She visioned her finger being bled yellow with matchsticks, being buried in the sand and pelted with bricks, and how she'd wet blood as she was chained to the toll booth, a fishwife. She was burned at the stake, fucked by presidents, indentured in chains, her bloated body stuffed in a ditch a thousand times over, her stomach starved in the famine. To walk the stretch of boarded up pubs and single ends with the frail and bruised beside her, coughing up the sins of man. And as the gentry built their walls, the, way the months had weathered her bitter. I'm not Eve, she said. A black coal in her chest now flaming ash and red with indignation of all, all that had been granted against her, all that had stole from her sisters, that time that was not his to take. I'm Cain, and I'm not able to leave with you, even if I wanted to. Oh, beautiful. Absolutely. I could, honestly, I could listen to your poetry all day long, this quality. <laughs> I love that. Is that quite a new one? Then? That's from the forthcoming collection, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, so that's part of that. Beautiful. Well, that I'm so chuffed that you've uh, joined us tonight to share these poems. Like it's um you're amazing. Like you're more than welcome to do another one if you want, or if you want to call it a day, like it's whatever you want to do, but either way you've been amazing. Um uh, so that's coming out on speculative books in October, isn't it? So that'll be available that's to pre order, I guess, in the next month or or yeah, yeah. If you have, they do a, they're a subscription service. So if you have a subscription, you'll get it in October. And oh, if cool. not, then it'll be on their website, or you can buy it from me. Hopefully, at gigs at some point, <laughs> if nothing else. Imagine that. Um, um, cool. Well, and also confessionals. Uh, have you got any copies on sale, or are we best off buying it through speculative books or? Yeah, that's on their website. I've only got my own copy now, so I think they've got the rest of it. So, yeah. so anyone watching, obviously, who hasn't bought Confessionals yet, get it from Speculative Books Direct. Cool. Yeah. Well, cool. yeah, amazing. Thank you so much. You are, you are brill. Um, do you fancy doing another one? Do you want to call it a day? It's whatever you want to do. It's all good. Um, I can do, do another one just to see us out. If yeah, I will. If you don't yeah. Yeah, do, do um, one that'd be great. Cool. Um, I wrote this poem years ago um, in response to the refugee crisis in the UK. And I've been watching the news recently and I'm going to just continue to perform it until I don't need to say it anymore. If that's all right. Absolutely. A thousand flood could have burst the banks of the Clyde each day in 1848 had it not been of people. The undead sailed in coffins from Derry. Irish fever spilled from the foil to boil the banks with typhoid. And then the young scratched with fleas with starving rats to be sacked and abandoned in Scotland's slums. And they were feared and they were greeted by no one. When my family arrived in Glasgow, they didn't flee famine but civil war. Their guilt tack was already black with Angorta more. Their names were warning signs on windows. And no worker trade gave way to forgotten faiths and altered names and just tags of terrier, terrorist, and take. But coffins are not made of mahogany today. They're tarpaulin and waves, not Kilkenny's mass graves, but the beds of the Aegean Sea. 
The roads of Damascus stacked with similarities, even Saul could see flocks of children lined beaches or flesh all bloated and grey with typhus, those parents' skeleton faces lined security gates and fences and wires poked with frail, famine hands and lips stitched and stomach pitted as Joe McDonnell or Bobby Sands, then they want me to say that they're not like us. They don't belong like us. I can never forget that my Scotland is cut from refugees. Know how I'm privileged because my sisters made their journeys for me. So as a child, I watched from couch and TV. Miles from pipe wall bombs and peace walls. And God, I'll not fall silent. I'll stand tall and I'll stand proud. And I'll stand with so in solidarity with displaced peoples now residing in Scotland. And not residing in Scotland, actually, everywhere. That was stunning. I'm so glad you did that in the context of what's going on. Like, that's incredible. Um, thank you. I think you're amazing. I'm so happy that you did this for us. And I can't wait to read uh, the new collection in October. Buzzing. Excellent. Thanks for having me, Matt. Thank you. Ooh, thank you so much. Thanks. Take care. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Uh, that was uh, incredible. Uh, Victoria McNulty. So obviously I mentioned during our most recent Instagram post, check out uh, confessionals from speculative books and the new collection coming out in October as well um, and yeah just show your love um, Victoria McNulty she's incredible uh, we'll be back next week as always half seven till eight and um, if you're watching this on IGTV or Facebook or YouTube please give us a like or a subscribe or a share or whatever it whatever it is um, and yeah my name is Matt Abbott we are him some folks cheers see you later